Hello friends! Welcome to Science With Me. My name is Dr. Erica and we are making some amazing Tinkercad circuits in this tutorial series. Now in one of our previous videos, we learned how to wire up an LCD display using the Arduino Uno. And if we start this simulation, we have this beautiful hello world that comes up. But I thought it would be fun to make this a little bit more useful and turn it into a scorecard. And we could have two teams and maybe it's a game and each team as you get points you can press a button and you will get um, a score that gets added each time you press the button. So I'm just going to move this stuff down a little bit so we have a little bit more space for our wiring. And to wire up our buttons, you're going to want two little push buttons and the idea is if I push this button we'll add one to the team one score and if I push this one we'll add one to the team two score. And so the way that the buttons work is they need to go to ground through a resistor on one side. So you can wire both of them up to ground through a resistor. And then we can change our wire color to red because the other side of the button is going to go into our five volts. All right, so this is our button wired up, but we do need to pull it off somewhere to put it into that Arduino. And we're gonna pull it off right here at the terminal that where the resistor comes in. So not at ground, but right between the button and the terminal. You can click there and we will wire this guy up and we will put it into our Arduino so it can read the data. All right, so I'm gonna to to take that guy, I'll color it a new color, let's color it gray. And then this one, I might as well also color gray as well and gray can be my button colors. All right, so this is about basically all the changes we need to do to this, to make this. I'm gonna put it over onto the side. Let's actually rename this instead of hello world. This will be our scorekeeper, which will be nice. So let's change our code a little bit because I don't want it to say hello world. I want it to have a score here. So for my text one, this could be team one. Maybe I'll put a little dot dot there so we can have a little bit of a space. It'll show us what team one is and maybe this is team two. Now if you have certain team names you could change this code right here and you would you could change it to whatever you want right there. So if I start my simulation now I've got team one and team two. All right I am going to need to keep track of some scores. So let's add in a score those will be integers it's like a one two three there's no decimals in these. And we'll call this score one and we'll have an integer that is score two. All right, so that gives me something that I can put in place of team one and team two. And in fact, let's set them both to zero every time that we start this program. All right, so when we plug it in, it's gonna set to zero. Now maybe we wanna see that score printed. And what we could do is LCD print my text one down here. All right, this is printing team one. So what I could do, instead of setting my cursor to the next line, I could print that score. So I could LCD print score one, and right below my text two, I could print LCD score two. LCD print score two, just like that. And we could run our program right now and see what it looks like. It's telling us the scores are zero. Maybe I want a space right here instead of it being right next to those colons. And the way I would do that is I would just add an extra space up here in that my text string. And so now when we print it, we'll see that little space. Maybe I like that a little better. All right, but now we need to be able to change these two numbers as I press these buttons, because right now it's not doing anything. So first I need to tell the Arduino that it should be looking for input on pin eight and pin nine. Right now it doesn't really care about that. It's not looking for anything on any of these pins because we didn't tell it to. We told it where the LCD was, but not where these buttons are. So in our setup, at the very top, we'll, put, we'll tell it what to look for. So that's called pin mode. And our pin mode for eight, which is this button right here. So we'll plug in the pin number and that's gonna be input put in all caps. So that tells it, look to see for something on pin eight. And of course we're gonna do that 
on pin nine as well. And that will also be input, just like that. So now it is looking for that, which is good, but we haven't told it to do anything with that. So again, now it's looking for something to happen to eight and nine, and maybe it sees something happen on eight and nine, but it's not actually displaying anything different because we haven't told it to do that quite yet. So in previous examples of our stuff, we have read um, what happens on these buttons, and you can check out specifically our traffic light tutorial if you are not sure. But what we did is we looked if the button was pressed. Oops, and I wanna look for that in the loop because it's gonna happen over and over again. It's not gonna look just once, it's gonna look all of the time. And we looked to see if the button was pressed. So if, and then we're gonna digitally read that because this is a digital pin. We can look over here. All these ones are digital and then the analogs over here are actually 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19 up here. That's the way we do it. But this guy's digital, so we're going to digital read. And we are going to digitally read pin 8. And if that pin is high, that means we pressed the button, and then we want to do something. And if it's high, we got to get our little squirrely bracket, uh, curly brackets on that if. Make sure you have an open and a close. And so now if it's high, what do we want to do? Well, we want to increase the score of team one, let's say, because that's gonna be if they press this button. So I could say that score one is going to equal score one plus one. And that tells me that whatever it used to be, add one to it. And then I'm gonna need to update what it's, we see on the screen, because if I run this right now, oops, let's see. Looks like I have something missing. Let's double check what that is. And it seems like I forgot my close parentheses right there. And I can't change anything right now because this is still initializing and sometimes I get stuck. It's really confused right now. So we will refresh our browser and then we can make that change. So let's go back into our code. And right here at the end of the high, I need a close parentheses right there. There we go. And we're gonna change score one to score one plus one plug it in, but now if I press this, it's still equal to zero here. And that's because we did not update what we are printing to the screen. Now I could write the update in that if loop if I wanted to, but if I need to use it in other places, because and I know I will because we're gonna have to reprint the screen if I press it for team two, what I can do is I can write a little sub program. So underneath your void loop, outside this last curly bracket, really important. We're going to make a new one. So you call it void and let's just call this one print score because that's what we're going to do. You have an open and close parentheses and then an open curly. Go down a few and put a close curly so you don't forget it because those ones will always make life tricky for you. All right so the first thing we got to do for when we print the score is we need to clear our LCD. If I don't clear the screen it's just going to sort of keep writing wherever it used to be. So I'm going to clear it first and the command for that is lcd.clear with an open closed, because it's its own little miniature program, and then of course your semicolon. And we're gonna do what we did up here. And basically we could actually copy all of this up here and we could paste it down here. And we will just delete these so they all line up. And so what's gonna happen is it's going to come down here and it will print our score. So let's do that. Let's now tell it to print the score. Print score, and then that should count for us. Now, if we wanna make the other button active, we will do the same thing. So I'm actually going to copy this whole if loop. I'll come down here and give myself a little space and paste it in. And now we're gonna digitally read pin nine, which is the other button. And if that button's high, then we're gonna to add to score two. We'll say that score two equals score two plus one, and we'll reprint that score. So we can see what this is going to look like by hitting our start simulation. And let's see what happens when we press. Oh, there we go. Now it's going up by a lot here. In fact, it's going up by, it's reading it way too quick. So my one quick little button press here 
is adding much more than just one to these scores. And I don't want that. So what I could do is, after I print this score, we could add a delay, like, hey, Arduino, you're reading things too fast. You're reading more than one input. I'm pressing it once, but you're thinking I'm pressing it 10 times. So let's delay to force it to wait. So we can add a delay of maybe a quarter of a second, so 250 milliseconds, and we can do that on both of these that and that should fix that for us it forces it to pause and not count up all the time and now I'm counting up by just one and if I hold it down it'll still start counting up and if we want to make sure that we have a delay longer if we don't want it to do that but as long as I just sort of press it and don't hold it down it is counting up by one each time so that is exactly what we want for our scorekeeper and in our next video we will learn about how we can Create some scenarios where you win this game. Maybe you go up to 10 and then we display a different screen because somebody won, which would be amazing. So that will be in our next video and we will check out a little bit more coding in this fun little tutorial. Thank you so much for joining us in our Tinkerset CAD circuits projects and we will see you next time. Bye friends.